Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast Reviews Lucha Underground Season 2 Episode 11 A big show this week as of course every single week And we're here to give you our thoughts and views And you may be thinking, our thoughts and views? Turbo Tony of course is the host of the show, that is me But I normally do this on my lonesome Not today, not on this episode Right next to me here is Matt Marsander, my co-host on the weekly episodes. You're here to review Lucha Underground with us this week. I am. It's, um, <laughs> well, with me on the visit, we have had time for me to um, get involved on the Lucha review. Well, I've did the first one. Yeah. I haven't been yeah. alone all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you're, like a, you're like a good surprise. You pop up every now and then. You're basically the undertaker of this, of this extra yeah, show. Yeah, I'll turn up on the, on the odd occasion and yeah. get a pop. And <laughs> I leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you get paid handsomely. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, <laughs> you paid with food. Yeah, exactly. That's how it goes. Uh, of course, uh, if you guys would like to interact with us and the podcast, then you can do so in various methods. The first of which, and the most, uh, the best one that we most use all the time. Uh, my words eluding me there is uh, facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. And of course, we have a Twitter handle, and I've got someone to drop it. The Twitter handle at Talk Wrestle Pod. It is that Twitter handle, and of course you can send us any audio questions and emails directly at our email address, which is Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at Gmail dot com. Without further ado, this is not the show for procrastination, Matt. We get straight into the Lucha Underground. That's here. it. Dive right in. Dive right in. So this is episode eleven. This is uh, fresh off of Matanza retaining his championship against Pentagon last week. That yep. whole kerfuffle with him and Vampiro. And that's how this episode started. It was, yeah, it was I Quito, mention it. Yeah. Uh, Quito paying Vampiro a visit and uh, throwing it. Ba- basically, he's being a bit ballsy here, Quito. Normally, you see him being a little bit coy with some of the wrestlers. Now he's got Matanza on his <laughs> he's side. He's pretty much like, no, oh, I've got backup. Yeah. I can be a dick. <laughs> yeah, he, can be, he, he throws his weight around a little bit. Yeah. So he's, he's basically saying to Vampiro, listen, you know, uh, if you want to if you want to get involved, sure, you can do that, but Pentagon was lucky just to get away alive last week. You may not be. Yeah. No, no, just bear that in mind. Yeah. And uh, obviously that, that whole thing, especially with the comics, Matt, which I know you haven't haven't seen, but the comics yeah. are a large part, and obviously that opening thing in episode one, which you did see, is a large bit about the difference between Vampiro and, I- and Ian Hodgkinson, the pills he's taken are basically suppressing him and what he is at the moment. Um, so apart from that... Um, that is the big, the big storyline with him going forward, and they're going to keep teasing it the way that they keep oh. going and stuff like that. So that's how the show started. Um, we then don't go straight into some uh, wrestling. We go straight into another scene here um, where they tease a little bit, of course, where you've got uh, Reyes and uh, Joey Ryan obviously doing their undercover investigation. Yep. Uh, since the last time that we saw them in this sort of environment... Obviously, Dario Cueto's come back, so that's the big talking point now, that they didn't even have to look for him, he's come back now. And the idea is that uh, they're going to try and get cosy with the boss, right? Yeah. In order to bring him in. And they're going to be enter- entering the Trios tournament, uh, you know, obviously with Mr. Cisco, which is the guy completely unaware that he's now being flanked by two undercover police officers. And they're going to go on about their way. Joe Ryan is being uh, a little bit... Arrogant. Well, I think he's mean. being Joey Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's there's arrogance, but then he just oozes arrogance and sleaze. Yeah, that's that, that's basically him in a nutshell, right? Yep. And undercover cop will know he is still pretty much that, right? Yeah. So um, they're going to be announced. They're, they're announced for the trios tournament, and they do wrestle here on this show. All right, then. So we actually, when we actually get into the show, it starts off with Ivelisse versus Cobra Moon. Ivelisse in some singles action on her own, not a boys with her this time. That's it. <clears throat> um, this match, Matt, we weren't too, weren't too happy with this match. No, it, it's just, it felt slow. Mm. Um, I can't really be- find the best words to describe it. It wasn't engaging. Um, I don't know. It sort of just sort of took it away. I mean, we've seen Eva do some great things during um, like trios tournaments and mm-hmm. things like that. And during the entire match, I was sort of comparing back to when she fought. Um, Wertes mm. and almost how it was quite different for how aggressive she was then yeah. and now it was a bit reluctant and quite slow paced yeah and it's not like reluctant like sexy style where they're trying to play up the reluct- you know that she is reluctant for a reason this was just a very slow paced match they're trying to get over that they're trying to outmaneuver hold each other which is fine 
I just didn't find it that, that interesting, yeah. personally. Um, it was, it's one of those things here that Cobra Moon, when she first came in, had that, that, that good video package. I thought her first match was okay. Since then, she's done very little, and the past two matches she had, she's had haven't been that good. Yeah, um, that's a fair, fair shout. So, we need to be impressed here. That's what yeah. I'm saying in regards to this character. Uh it just hasn't gone off that well. Even Evelise is a proven commodity at this point. Yep. We know that this is probably just an off week for her. Maybe she didn't mesh well with the Cobra Moon. But she, she's she got great matches in her. She's had great matches on this show. More often than not, she will have a great match. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, to be fair, I, I don't, I'm not personally won over by Cobra Moon mm. like, in any way. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, even then, I was sort of a bit... I sort of saw the match and I was like, eh... Yeah, you know, you yeah. sort of like you always you always get that sometimes. You'll see like versus such a person, you're like, I don't care about that person. Yeah. As a result, you sort of step away, um, and that's kind of how I am with Cobra Moon. I don't, I've not seen anything yet that's really impressed me. I don't have so far haven't had a reason to sort of go, yes, I like Cobra Moon. She did this, she did that, or yeah. anything like that. It's just. And she's it, just a snake lady who hisses. Yeah, I, on a show where you've got a lot of impressive guys doing a lot of impressive stuff and girls, yeah. she hasn't really come out of the crowd so far. Um, and matches like this don't help when they're yeah. they're, they're, they're they're not on. The, they're, I'm just gonna say we were a little bit bored over over pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say it's that. almost like sort of cementing legacy sort of thing, mm. like laying the foundations. And I don't think it's a very sturdy foundation with what she's done so far. Yeah, fully agree. Um, so the match, so this the show didn't start off too great on the in ring, so on in ring part, but that's okay, that's all right. Uh, Eva does get the win though, and um, which you would expect because she is the you know the baddest bitch in the place. Yep. Um, Cobra Moon gets her first loss. She doesn't have any storyline running for her at the moment, and we technically neither does Eva apart from that small little storyline that she has running, which pretty much goes all the time with Katrina. So these are two women at the moment that you quite don't know where they're going, except for one well, who's the trio's champion. Kind of does, yeah, exactly, she's the trio's champion, so she yeah. will consistently have a storyline. And seeing as the trio's tournament's kicked off, um, I think I reckon we've seen Eva Lee's wrestle today. We'll probably see sort of like Son of Havoc next week, and then I go the next the week after that sort of thing. Mm. Just sort of go well with singles. The trio's champions, as individuals, are strong, and then they'll go right the final team to face it, they face them in the tournament they'll be then facing a team that has momentum who have stayed you know um, Consistent. consistently yeah. said like you know here we are we have won alone we have won together yeah come at us yeah oh yeah fully agree um, the, I'm, not, I'm not worried about Eva Lisa at all it's Cameron no. I'm a little bit worried about here but we'll see, we'll see how it goes from there so we go back to backstage Matt I'm getting the feeling that a certain non-wrestler is sort of becoming one of our new favourites on this show. <laughs> famous I, being... Yeah, I'm going to call 423, get famous. <laughs> so you're going to get famous, man. <laughs> I'm going to get show. famous. You're going to get famous. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's trying to recruit Mascarita Sagrada, who is a little wrestler. Who looked tight. Like, well, like he is a little on, wrestler. No, I know he's, on a, he's a little yeah. wrestler, but he comes up to him and he's doing sort of like flyweights or whatever, and he's yeah. like, he looks so small. Oh. <laughs> I don't know whether it's like PC to say, li- I think that is the PC term, little wrestler, right? It's better than midget wrestler. Yeah, I yeah, I will say that. Um, the camera then panned to... Uh, Sexy star uh, who's doing workouts and stuff. Uh, famously, didn't do much in that segment. It was just kind of, here's my card. I like and you, sexy, I like and you Sagrada. Yeah. I'll make you famous. Yeah. Here's my card. Yeah. Give me a call. Yeah. Which he Get should do, by fame. the way. Which he, um, Sagrada hasn't been around that much. <clears throat> if he gets involved with Famous B, who knows, right? Yeah. Who knows where he could go? That's it. That's exactly right. So it goes to Sexy Star who's lifting weights. Um, she has got a phenomenal body. I will give her that, but she is. Uh, Probably the most ripped woman on the roster. Like yeah, she's, uh, I'd say so. Um, the Mac comes up to her, and do you want to say exactly what popped into your head? In this it thing? looked like a dirty, sleazy paw. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this dank, this like dank. What and, does he say to her? This like, dank and dingy gym. <laughs> and comes this big black guy in his pants, and he's like, "Hey, sexy." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh God!" Like, oh, we're like three frames away from just like the bow, 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 like the terrible slap bass. And you know what's wrong with you? I can't actually disagree. Like, it, it, honestly, like, if you'd shown anyone on the street, okay, this is what happens here. You think it's just wrestling based porn that's about to happen. <laughs> it, it, didn't go, it didn't go up that way. But obviously, that didn't go. Lucha Underground's not going that hardcore. That's a different set of hardcore. That's it. I don't think that's where we're going. Um, 
the Mac is saying that he's obviously got a he's been put in a team with Marty the Moth and Mariposa for this trios tag tournament. Yep. And he asks, well, you know, <laughs> can I have your help, sexy? And, and sexy star is basically like, no, I just can't do it. You know, she's yeah. been completely against I, it. I, and I, I don't like, like that. Yeah. No. Uh, and she's always come across that this um, that this uh, physical, no, sorry, psychological turmoil that she's gone through has really sort of uh, messed her up. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's what they're carrying on from there. So that goes straight into that match. Um, the Trios tournament match, the first of the Trios tournament, if, I, if I'm correct. Uh, Cortez Castro. Of course, which is Reyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Cisco, Joey Ryan against the Mac, Marty the Moth, and Mariposa. This match was a lot better than the first one. I think that's just agreed. Yeah. First off, um, just some, a lot of good action, some good tag team wrestling here. Uh, you got Joey Ryan doing Joey Ryan things. <laughs> Joey Ryan being Joey Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Drizzling his cock in um, in <laughs> baby oil before the match as as, <laughs> as you do. his body. Down the pants. It's yeah, well, like... good measure. Matt, Matt the, the, the iron penis requires a lot of maintenance, okay? That's it. I'd imagine, I can't imagine the amount of lubricant that stuff needs. <laughs> Just to keep the gears going. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> it's a weapon of mass destruction, and you need it to be taken care of. And that's what he's doing. He's not sleazy. That's it. Exactly. I can't exactly defend the whole rubbing the lollipop around his chest hair, but still, there's only a certain, <laughs> there's only a certain point I can really go. Um, and, of course, like, you know, the crew are looking at... Ryan, who's basically been as as elaborate as he can be, stealing the, the spotlight. Like, the fuck, yeah. Um, the crew are face now, which is something that they've kind of gone with since they split up with Chavo. They're going completely face. They even mentioned on commentary that they're starting to get some favour along the the believers. That's it. Um, which is okay. I'm sure that, that's fine. I've got no problem. To me, the crew were kind of bit players as he was anyway. So you're not exactly going to miss them as like bad guys on the show. They are what they need to be. They are what needs to be on the on the format of the show. Yeah. I'm sure they might play up down the line once it gets revealed that um, that Castro and Ryan are actually agents. That Cisco is going to be a little bit like, what the fuck? Like the hell? He's going to be like a sympathetic character because he's by the yeah, because you know. he's been sort of screwed over by his team. Yeah, uh, the one guy he's got left in the crew, which is um, which is uh, Cortez Castro, isn't who he thought he was. So yeah, all yeah. along. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. Um, obviously, on the other side of the ring, you've got the Mac. Clearly not getting on too well with uh, Marty the Moth, who is uh, still doing his creepy ass shit, which is yep. good always stuff. good. Mariposa, by the way, for all the stuff we said about Cobra Moon not making much of a great um, season so far, Mariposa, in the very few times that she's come out and actually got into the ring, I think she's pretty good. Yeah, we're ha- I'm having with Mariposa. Um, she's done really well, and she's she's a lot more fluid. Than Cobra Moon, she's a little more, more sure of herself. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, and I looked them up. Um, like the 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 wrestler who plays Mariposa, she's like she's got plenty of years under her belt. Um, she's no scrub by any means. She's done the indie rounds, so she's someone who knows knows her craft. And I'm sure maybe the woman who who plays Cobra Moon is, but maybe she just hasn't meshed as well. Yeah, and the matches haven't. I mean, we, as well. like you said, we're sort of with Eva Lee and her and Cobra Moon's match. It may just be the fact that it's just two people who just don't coincide very well. Do, yeah, that they just don't have much chemistry, and that yeah, happens sometimes. Randy Orton, John Cena don't have chemistry, but both can have great matches with other people. Maybe it's something like that. Don't yeah. Know. But Mariposa, anyway, she's she's doing fantastic, and uh, she comes across as this kind of almost like she Marty the Moth is just playing playing crazy, right? Mariposa comes across as she's creepy but dangerous at the same time. Yeah. That's the sort of dynamic that they're going for here. Um. But uh, the Mac is, is, is um, in the end, after doing stuff that no man of his size should be able to do. Agreed. Doing Apollo crew shit without that fucking super <laughs> fucking chiseled, chiseled build, body. Yeah. Um, I said before once, Matt, that it's like, what, it's one thing seeing um, a guy of Apollo Crews' like, size and build do something like that. It, may, it looks like he was built to do that. When you've got the Mac doing that, it's like... That team, that's that's it's, even more impressive. It's a proper just... suspend belief. Yeah, yeah. We're like, how do you, how? He's like doing flips over the top ropes, yeah, like, like, like nothing. Yeah, battling, standing moonsaults, you know. Yeah. Like, just like it's the you know, usual stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, and that just shows you even more, especially when you get more guys nowadays. Of the more, let's just say, dusty roads build, yeah. showing you that you don't have to be chiselled out of granite to show that you can wrestle and be athletic. You know, there's a lot of guys out there now, not with that perfect build, doing fine for themselves. You don't have to be chiselled. Um, so 
Yeah, he uh, ends up getting into a bit of an altercation here with Marty because, you know, they keep forcefully tagging each other in when they don't want to, when the other guy doesn't want them to be tagged in. Well, no, the Mac basically, he started the match and then he spent most of it just on the outside because mm. Marty and Mariposa were like, no, you're my brother. Okay, you're my sister. Tag, yeah. tag. Yeah. And as Mac's like, the fuck? Yeah. So he, he gets forceful, tags himself in, uh, even kicks Mariposa off the side so he can do his dive over the ropes, and that incenses Marty, and then they end up having a back and forth between yeah. them. Um, Mac ends up hitting the stunner on um, on the moth, and then that sets him up for the tag team finisher. Joey Ryan's actually the legal man, so he gets the pin, yep. and celebrates as if he just won the world championship. <laughs> so He's all over the place, and yet again, you've got Cisco and Castro just like, Really? Yeah. As Ryan's like, yeah, <laughs> look at me and my hairy, greasy chest. Yeah. And everyone's like, whatever, mate. Yeah. Just, all right. Uh, yeah, he's literally treating as if you like, won the Royal Rumble or something. Like, <laughs> just, like, <laughs> he won Aztec Warfare. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, so, a good match. This is, this is a lot of fun. And this is, the, I think, this is probably the longest match on the, on, on the, on the, on the card, on the yeah. episode. Well, um, when you've well, when the main event's a title match involving Matanza, it you're not last really going to get a long match. Yeah, nor should you in some in some instances either. So this was the longest match, had the most in ring action. This was far more entertaining than the first match was. Yeah. Um. So kudos to these guys. It was a lot of fun. So then we um, we cut over to uh, another scene involving Dragon S. Tekka doing his usual thing. He seems to very much like um, spray painting question marks over Lucha Underground signs. Don't know whether that's just a natural thing he likes to do. He's like, oh, yeah. um, all I can think is Dario Quasar just freaking out. Who's doing this? That's the real thing that's breaking. <laughs> that's Tekka like. in the corner, just like. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got Rey Mysterio up there, who looks, by the way, guys, like he's wearing a new fucking badass mask. It's like the same design, but but just accentuated. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's, it's like he's dragoed the thing up. Like yeah, it's kind yeah, of like yeah. it's it's like popped out. Of I think we see it in like a proper light, which we'll, they they go on about saying how they've got. Um, like a match next week in the Trias tournament. Mm. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing his mask. Yes. Um, it's it, I, We couldn't see it much here because it was in the darkness, but it is different from his usual mask because it was, you know, it was almost like, you know the way that sometimes Batman's mask like accentuates his cheekbones and stuff like this? Sort yeah. Of it was almost a little bit like that, right? So, um, yeah, good, good stuff there. Basically, they're talking about how they've been entered into the Trias tournament, as you said there, Matt. And they've got a teammate, Prince Puma. That's pretty big acquisition for that this team, That is an right? awesome team right there. There was a, kind of a moment here where they're all sitting over, looking over the city, and I was like, this almost feels like the Avengers, right? <laughs> the three, three guys coming together, especially when it's from Mysterio and Puma, right? They've got an opportunity here to build up this Dragon S Tekka to be another big star for them down the line that they can use. Maybe even when Mysterio goes down the line, this Dragon S Tekka is, you know, hopefully they can build him up into something here, and that's hopefully something that they can do. Lucha Underground Championship match. We're getting plenty of them pretty much every single week since um, Mil Muertes came back. He, yeah. um, he had his, his, his um, title match against Pentagon and Puma, won that. Then he had his match against Phoenix, lost, lost that. that. Um, the Aztec Warfare. Aztec Warfare. Then he, def- yeah, Matanza Defenders. Yes, we've had literally like yeah. five episodes of the title being defended. Um, Matanza here, clearly the monster, right? Uh, you brought up a good thing here, though, Matt. It's a little bit weird that he follows the key around, almost like like Mil Muertes follows the stone yeah. around. Not quite sure what that's about. Well, but... they, yeah, I mean, they played up like this. Uh, Muertes' stone has the magical properties and things yeah. like that. But like, I don't know whether it's the fact that like Matanza follows the key because it symbolizes his imprisonment or something like that. Mm. But it's essentially like, look. Magic key. Yeah. Like, it's almost like, it's like Cueto treating him like a toddler. Like, follow the shiny thing. Yeah. He's like yeah, shaking yeah. his keys in front of his face. Uh, it was almost like he's uh, dangling the carrot in front of the donkey. Yeah, 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 yeah. sort of thing. Um, so, I like this match. And the reason why I like this match is because it's continuing the build-up of Lucha Underground's newest huge star in Matanza. Yeah. Right? What, what is one way that you build up a new star in any company? You make him get big victories against big established talent. Yeah. And he's beaten some big established talent already. Well, so he's already far. beaten Pentagon and Phoenix. Yeah. In singles as well. And one Aztec Not Warfare. Not to mention Aztec yeah. Warfare where yeah. he cleared out like seven people. Yeah. This is how you build up a new monster star for your for, for, for your uh, promotion. For brand, yeah. Um, he's coming out, he's getting... 
to Phoenix's uh, credit, he gets a lot of hits to the He's trying to uh, to kick. He does get a lot of kicks in Matanza's head. But we all know how this is going to pan yeah, out. Matanza doesn't even fall, yeah. even to a knee. He's just like, clock. He's, yeah, right. He's bringing suplex, German suplexes to a new level, or German suplexing his opponents into the turnbuckle. Yeah. So, oh, that, that was nasty. That was nasty. There went one of Phoenix's thousand lives. Mm, that's it. I don't even know how many he's got left, considering his matches, but uh, can't have that many left, surely. I mean, nah, Mil Muertes... Mil Muertes probably took took care of about a hundred of them during that <laughs> during his matches at very least, uh, or maybe just in grave consequences. Maybe that's, alone, yeah, yeah. Um, but I like this match. Um, yeah, you kind of knew where it was going, but it's it's okay because I thought Phoenix gave a good account of himself here. Um, Matanza obviously retains. Yep. Um, even though Phoenix gave up a good fight, Matanza had him. He 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 was never in a position where he looked like he was going to lose. Yeah. Yeah, like at no point was Matanza sort of like on the ropes, on the back foot, and yeah. all things like that. It's like, no, he's he'll take a couple of knocks, and then instantly he's recovered. Then that's it. Phoenix will come in like off the top rope, catch, shit, yeah, uh, slam. That's it. Uh, and then it's just another big suplex or another big hit or something yeah. along those lines. Um, so he does retain the championship. That uh, so, sort of uh, it's like a power slam mat. It's kind of strange to explain it because you know power slams normally you go um, towards the head. He goes towards the feet, so it looks a bit more devastating because it means that the you know when he's going down when he's twisting towards the feet, and the feet's going. It's like the head is getting the accentuation yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of the of the throw. Uh, whereas like most power slams, they roll with it sort of thing. Um, so it looks more dirty in that sense, which Definitely. it should do. Uh, hits that, gets the win. And um, all the while, Dario Cueto is just telling him, just destroy him. him. You know, make him bleed. Get it done. Get it done. And, uh, you know, and there's a point here that Cueto can't control his monster because, you know, when if, Mat- if Matanza wants to kill the guy, he's going to kill the guy. That's yeah. just the bottom line of it. You're not going to get, you're not going to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, like, it's not like, like, Dario's like, I have the key. It's like, fuck your key. I'm yeah. like three times the size of you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, literally, I've got this guy ready to be eaten right here. This shit's going to happen. Um, <laughs> it's like it's gone to the point that Matanza's sat at the table, he's tucked in his napkin, he's picked up the fork. Yeah. And Dario's like, no, and takes the plate away. He's like, you put that fucking plate back. He's ba- basically like my daughter then. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Essentially, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> no. No. You're, that, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. So it's ironic then, Matt, that the one person to come and save Phoenix is Milmuertes. No, I don't think he's saving Phoenix. No, <laughs> no. Um, he comes out, Milmuertes. We've said this before. We said this before, Matt. That the the real money match here down the line is Matanza Muertes in one hell of a super heavyweight clash. Yeah. This is going to feel like the damn place will not be able to hold these two. It's guys. like it's uh, it's King Kong versus Godzilla. Sort yeah, of thing. yeah, that's it's it. Just, Unreal. Yeah, it feels like a, a clash of the titans, you know, all this sort of thing. So he he clears out Matanza. Matanza's like, "What the fuck just hit me?" Sort of thing, and he realizes that a guy equal to his size, yeah, like, is uh, oh. getting involved. And just as it looks like it's, um, he's going to turn his attention to Phoenix. He's like, "Well, I've got bigger fish to fry at this point. I'm out of yeah. here." By that point, Cueto's like, "Come, Matanza, yeah, follow the key." Yeah. So it looks like um, Mil Muertes. You know what? He's always going to dislike Phoenix. But he's not going to put himself in a position where Matanza could run back out and attack him. He's yeah. got his sights firmly fixated on that monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what he wants to... I mean, because obviously he does Katrina's bidding to a certain degree. Yeah. Katrina wants her place back. And this is this is the... Beating the shit out of Phoenix isn't going to get her any that's closer it. to getting the place Katrina back. Katrina wants her temple. Muertes wants his belt. And what's Phoenix going to do? Nothing. Be a, like a roadblock. Yeah, that's it. He's a speed bump. Um, the end game here is is that Matanza Muertes match. Yeah, that is going to be fucking off the chain. And I know it's way too early to start building towards like Ultima Lucha. You can't like I think Ultima Lucha is like twenty episodes away at this point. Something like that, surely. Um, yeah, um, they can't build up to that yet. But this would be a decent stopgap for them to really promote this match. This could be a match that they could really build people up for and get them really excited. I wouldn't want them to do it next week and rush it out of the way. This match, they should know that the fans would be teased. They need to tease us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to play it up, and that would be good. Even have Quato is somewhat even reluctant. Just, yeah, I mean, well, you'd, you'd have, like, one week, Matanza faces, I don't know, just because he was on this show, I'll say Azteca Jr. Yeah. You wouldn't want that, but... Yeah. He destroys Azteca. Matanza is further reinforced as big guy. Mm. 
Muertes gets involved. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Muertes has a match against Aerostar. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. And then Matanza gets involved. Mm. And it's just like you're con- they're constantly just like trading almost like one ups. Yeah. That's it. But they're never actually coming to blows. That's it. That's it. And that match just doesn't get thrown out. And, you know, like I said, Kwaito can be very reluctant. Even Katrina to a certain point, because she knows that she's basically rolling the dice at throwing her guy against Matanza. It's basically win or I lose my top guy, because yeah. Matanza's going to fucking Win or him. I lose everything. Yeah. Um, so, because, I mean, to be fair, like, all credit to him. Like, the disciples of death are all well and good, but... If you ain't got Muertes, you ain't got fuck all. No. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. <laughs> no, that's it. And even then, with the Disciples of Death um, losing their trios championships and Muertes basically dispatching them on his own in, in, yeah. in a fit of rage, yeah, Muertes is the real guy in, in that camp that makes Katrina Power. powerful. Um, so, yeah, that's the power play there. It all sort of makes sense. I like it. That was the, as soon as I saw Matanza, I was like, this is where the big money match is. This is this is where it's going. Especially it's considering stuck. before you even came out, before even Katrina came to the top of the stairs, I was thinking to myself, I'd love a Matanza Muertes match. Yeah. And then all you hear is that, stop! And you're like, yeah. Katrina, yeah. yes! Yeah. Um, and then all the fans click on and suddenly we yeah. realise what's going on. Um, one of the things I will say about this, about this show in overall, I was worried, because when we started up with that first match, I was worried that this is going to be a, one of the stopgap episodes. And it's okay for Lucha Underground to have them, because... They normally hit it out of the park. They shouldn't, you know, to a degree, it'd be extremely hard for them to have every episode. I, I, I wasn't a big fan of last week's episode. Um, this episode I thought was better. Um, yeah. In, in, just in general, I thought that middle match was really entertaining. You had some good in ring action there. The main event, it was what it was. They teased that match at the end. It's just yeah, that first video match. packages as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing we failed to mention was obviously we had the kill shot video package as well oh wow yeah I completely forgot that about that yeah yeah which I mean I was that was the one thing that I was really confused about when they first released the season trailer mm. where it's like who the hell is this commando guy yeah yeah and then it's like oh yeah, yeah. and he's going on like I've got like I was a sniper I got 37 confirmed kills and I'm in a different war now yeah. and I was like quite like this video package yeah the video package what I like about that though Matt is that I mean Killshot's been around but like he was just one of the the guys, right? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't really given any sort of character, and he wasn't given any background or even any rivalries. This looks like at the very least they're going to give him. Um, they obviously now they're give going, him time, give him time, and he was one of those guys that if they were going to give time to him, he's clearly got the ability to at the very least back that up. So hopefully, there's something down the line that they could that they could do that with him. That's um, it. But we'll see how that pans out. But uh, yeah, after the gods, yeah. I can yeah. see him in a gift to the gods contender. Yeah, I mean that's got to start up soon. I mean they've got to start handing those medallions back out to people for that uh, that Ultima Lucha match to put that title back on someone. I would like that to be a regular thing that you don't just win if it when when it's vacated when they when they cash it in for the world title match that the you don't just some it's not a match between two people to get that belt. They have to go back to the medallion. Back to square one. Yeah, that's how I would like it to go. Yeah, and it's one of those long you've things you've still got to earn up. your medallion. Then you've got to earn the belt. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. I agree. Um, overall, Matt, what do you think about this match? On our rating scale, where would you put this? Um, on our rating scale, yeah. probably it's worth a once. Yeah, I think it's worth a once. That's Definitely. What um, it was good. Like It built, it did what it needed to do. And yeah, it was better than last week's episode. Yeah. Um, we had a really good sort of trios match. Uh, more Matanza, which is good, as far as I'm concerned, in a good way. Mm. I'd hate to see Matanza just get like, wasted on something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but they're protecting him very well and booking it really well. Um, yeah, it's worth a once, and it it won't be for that sort of once of, I have to get through it. you want to get through it, but you won't want to go back to it. Yeah, no, I agree with you, yeah. Um, I said last week that you, that you if you were dying to see a, your Lucha Underground, then that's fine, but you could give it a skip. This one has got, I think, it's got a little bit more to it. Maybe it's just maybe to us. Maybe I'm in a better mood because I'm watching it, you know, side by side by my co-host here. But um, that's just our general thoughts on it. Yeah. I think it was definitely worth worth a watch through. Not the best um, wrestling show that we've seen over the course of this week, but when you've got the WrestleMania week on on that course, then you had Takeover. Takeover was the show that I'm talking about. That was better, of course, but you wouldn't expect it to be better than that. <laughs> Lucha Underground's just ticking along nicely, and that's yeah. completely fine. Um. Is there anything else you want to say about the show before we wrap stuff up? No. 
Let's do our plugs then and we'll get the hell out of here. Of course, if you'd like to interact with us, you can uh, yeah, through our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. We also have that Twitter handle. Drop it again like it's hot at Talk Wrestle Pod. Yes, let's do that. And of course, you can send us any audio questions and emails at Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. If you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button. That way you can catch me and Matt talking on our normally two-hour podcast every single week. And that one comes up every single weekend where we'll be going over the Raw after WrestleMania this week, which is going to be quite the interesting chat. And of course, if you want to uh, leave any questions regarding Lucha Underground, then leave them here and we'll answer them on the the show next week that are Lucha Underground specific. If they're just general wrestling questions and they get asked, they get answered yeah. on the regular show every single week. Uh, apart from that, like the video, all that great stuff. Thank you for the support. Um, these Lucha Underground videos have been doing pretty pretty well. Nice yeah. little slice of audio for for, um, for our subscribers, and um, we'll catch you all next time. We'll catch you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.